I say you are a king. I say you are a queen. Whether the enemy like it or not, I stand here and I speak over you that you are a king and you are a queen. For your star has appeared. the senior pastor of Gateway Baptist Church, Bryce, Ohio. I'm so pleased that you are listening to me today and I pray to the Almighty God that God use me to be a blessing unto your life and unto the life of your family members. I strongly believe in my spirit that God, He has a word for somebody today and I pray that God will touch your life and God will also impart knowledge into your life. Today, I want to focus on the series that I've started, Kingdom Living. Kingdom Living. But today, I want to talk to you on this uh, subtopic, the keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom. Uh, my last episode, I explained about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And I also explained the differences between God's kingdom and the kingdom of Satan. And I talked to you about the residents in the kingdom and those who also in the kingdom. So I explained that for you to enter that kingdom, you have to and you must know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. So Jesus Christ is the master key to the kingdom. He is the master key for you to enter that kingdom. You must know him and you have to accept him as your Lord and your personal Savior. So I want to read this Bible verse, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 19. 
I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And I say to you that, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, death, will not overpower it by preventing the resurrection of the Christ. I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a very powerful Bible verse. Jesus Christ was having a conversation with his disciples. And uh, he asked them, he said, who do people think that I am? And they gave their opinions about what others have been saying about him. Then he asked them specifically, he said, what about you? And Peter said, Jesus, you are the son of the most high God. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, this one, it, it, it wasn't you. It was the spirit that revealed it to you. And he went further to tell him that I say to you, Peter, that upon this rock I will build my church and the gate of Hades can never prevail against it. And you all know that the rock is Jesus Christ. That the rock is Jesus Christ. He became the cornerstone, the stone that people rejected. The stone that people refused. The stone that people treated it with contempt. The stone that people did not accept. That stone has become a cornerstone. So he said he's going to build a church on that rock. And that rock is Jesus. And we all know that Jesus is the word. And he's going to build his ministry upon the word of God. Any ministry that is built on the word of God. Any business, any entity, any person who is put on the word of God is put to last and put to resist and to overcome any storms, any challenges in life. That thing, that is anything that is put on the word of God, it will survive the test of time. I pray that the word of God will become your foundation. So you will put your life and you put everything that you are going to do in life upon the word of the Lord because the word of God is solid. Then he went further and he said, Peter, I will give you the keys, which is the authority. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, whatever you declare as improper and unlawful on earth, that thing will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare unlawful on earth. That thing has already been loose in heaven. May God Almighty grant us uncommon knowledge in his word so that we will be able to stand the test of time. Now, I just want to share with you briefly about the facts about keys facts about keys. You all know that keys grant us access and it can often deny us access, entry into a place, into a house, into an office. You see, keys give us access. Keys give us access into a place. So what I'm going to share with you are the things that are going to give us access Things that are going to grant us access into the kingdom of God. We get to understand that we are operating in two kingdoms. We are living on this planet Earth. And we cannot deny that fact that we are living here. We are human beings. We are living physically on this planet Earth. But we also have another kingdom that we are living, which is the kingdom of God, which is our spiritual kingdom. So technically, we have dual citizenship. We have citizenship of this earth and the citizenship also in heaven. So keys are something 
that grants access to a place. It grants access into an office. It grants access into our house. If you don't have a key to your house, it means that you are a thief. So Ehud came to him, the king of Edom. Now he was sitting upstairs in his school privy chamber. Then Ehud said, "I have a message from God for you." So he arose from his seat. Then Ehud reached with his left hand, took the dagger from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. Even the hilt went in after the blade. And the fat closed over the blade, for he did not draw the dagger out of his belly, and his anger came out. Then Ehud went out to the porch and shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked the door. When he had gone out, Ehud's servants came to look, and to their surprise, the doors of the upper room were locked. So they said. He is probably attending to his knees in the cool chamber. So they waited till they were embarrassed, and still they had not opened the doors of the upper room. Therefore, they took the key and opened them, and there was their master falling dead on the floor. So here, I'm not going to、uh, spend time about what Ehud did. But I want to. I'm trying to lay emphasis on the significance of a key, the importance of a key. What key can do, and what key key can open doors onto you. Keys can open, grant you access into the palace. Keys can take you to a place if you know a specific key. Ladies and gentlemen, your life. Very easy, especially if you are doing a particular specific business, and you know what you are doing, it becomes very easy for you. So the specific key that you use to open a specific, we get to understand that every door has a different key, except we have a master key. So in this kingdom, I have already established the fact. That Jesus Christ is the master key, and once we know Him, and once we have Him, and once He lives within us and in us, and once He possesses us, we know that we have Him. That's what Bible says. He Himself said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can enter this kingdom except through me." You cannot enter the kingdom of God without going through Jesus Christ. He is the master key to the kingdom. And now, because we have doors in the kingdom, and each door also comes with a specific key, and we have I have established the fact that keys can grant you access, and keys can also deny you access. So with this incident, as soon as Ehud finished killing the king of Edom, Bible says that, and he locked the door. By locking the door, he prevented the servant from entering. By locking that door, he prevented his people from entering. The Edom servant stood there, and they said, "Maybe our master." 
a certain age to himself. He's easing himself. But they didn't know that somebody had already killed him. So they waited for some time. Then they went and took another key. Somebody shout another key. You see, there's a key that can open the doors of prosperity unto you. There's a key that can open the doors of elevation unto you. There's a key that can open the doors of breakthrough, the doors of salvation. There's a key that can open the doors of healing, the doors of deliverance. You just have to discover that particular key so that that door which has been shut before you will be opened. So as soon as they took that key, they were able to open that door. May God grant you a key that will open your door. The door that has been shut. The door which has been closed. The door that has been closed before you and behind you. May God give you the right key to open that door. If you believe it, shout a big amen. chapter 23 verse 13 he said but woe to you scribes and pharisees you hypocrites for you set up the kingdom of heaven against men for you neither go in yourselves nor do you allow those who are entering also to go in these pharisees these scribes jesus was addressing them he said woe unto you people you are very hypocrite pretenders. You don't want to enter this kingdom. You don't want to go to heaven. At the same time, there are people who have decided to go. You are forbidding them, preventing them. Your attitude, your actions, and your character can prevent somebody from going to heaven. Many churches, many institutions, many pastors are preventing others from entering the kingdom. I pray that anything that will prevent you from going to heaven, anything that will prevent me from enjoying the kingdom of God, I pray that thing out from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, any person who has become an obstacle and hindrances from you accessing the kingdom of God, preventing you from accessing the kingdom of God, I pray that God himself will delete that person, eliminate that person from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything which has not been planted by God in your life, may God have them so that you can get the right key and to access the kingdom of God. We get to understand that he can also protect us. Keys can also protect us. Because if somebody is pursuing you, and let's assume that somebody is going after you, chasing you, and you are running away, as soon as if you are having the right key, you can open your door and close it. And as soon as you close it, the person who is pursuing you will never be able to enter that place and to come and do you anyhow. That's why Samuel said, He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So for you to secure the divine protection, you must abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You must dwell in Jesus Christ. And once you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, he becomes your refuge and he becomes your fortress. And who is Satan to attack you? And who is the demon to destroy you? And who will be the principalities, authority, powers of darkness. I said to destroy your destiny. That will never happen. Keys can grant you protection. Keys 
in this context, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 19, represent spiritual authority. Represent spiritual power. Represent. You see, let, let me just differentiate these two. Power and authority. We use them interchangeably. But they are uniquely different a little bit. Because power simply means the ability to do. If you have power, it means that you've been empowered to do something. Which means that you have the capacity, the strength to do something. The ability to do. The ability to heal. The ability to fight. You get to understand that you have spiritual power. And you have physical power. We have financial power. We have economic power. We have military power. We, we have so many religious power. You see, so power is ability. I pray that God will give you the power that you need to accomplish whatever assignment that he has ordained you to do on this planet Earth. <music>
take your hands off my business. Take your hands off my ministry. Take your hands off my children. You command it and you speak with boldness and with courage and with power because you know who you are. May God reveal himself unto you so that you know who you are in the Lord. Because in this kingdom, you must know who you are. Kingdom, king, you must know. Verse 22. I want to read something. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. He said, The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. He said, The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open, and no one shall shout. And he shall shout, and no one will be able to open that door. God was speaking the, through the prophet. He said, my son, I'm going to give you the key. I'm going to give you the authority. And whatever he opens, that thing will be open. And whatever he closes, that thing will be closed. And nobody on this planet Earth will be able to open it again. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing say he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens, and no one shut, and shuts, and no one opens. May God open the doors of opportunity unto you. May God open the doors of greatness unto you. May God open the doors of elevation, the doors of breakthrough, because when he opens, nobody will be able to close it. That is the authority of the key. Once you carry it, you can open doors, and nobody will be able, I say, to close it. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, I want to share also with you this morning. Key represents knowledge. Key represents knowledge. Luke chapter 11, verse 52. Jesus was speaking and he said to them, he said, you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourself. And those who were entering, you were hindered. Them. Those who are entering, you hinder them. Knowledge is a key. Oh, knowledge is so powerful. Once you know what you are doing, nobody will be able to intimidate you. Nobody will be able to frustrate you. And nobody will be able to look down upon you. Because you are know that you know exactly what you are doing. Knowledge is a key. In this kingdom of God, in this kingdom living, you need knowledge. You need knowledge. You, need, you must know what you want. So that with that knowledge, it will open doors unto you. He said, Hosea 4 says, He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are destroyed, not because of principalities, not because of witchcraft, not because of witches and the wizards, 
not because of demons. People are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. People are not doing well in this kingdom because of lack of knowledge. If we can spend time and study the word of God, which is the manual of life, things will be very easy for all of us. But we don't want to study it. The Lord prayed for me. Everything has become dry true in life. We want everything quick, fast, and we get it. Dry true. We drive through McDonald's. Then we order the food, we pick it up, then we drive out. That's what people have become. People don't want to read anymore. People don't want to learn anymore. People don't want to study anymore. We want people to pray for us all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, but meanwhile, you can pray for yourself. Because Mighty 7 7 says, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open unto you. If we can take our time and study it, life will be very wonderful for us. May God help you. I remember in Acts chapter 22. Verse 22 to 28. You all know about Apostle Paul, a man full of knowledge and wisdom. A man who took his time to study the Bible and the law. A man who went to school. But Bible says that one day he was arrested and was given to the commander. And they started lashing him. They were giving him cake. Acts chapter 22, verse 22 to 28. And they listened to him until this word. And then they raised their voice and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out, tore off their clothes and threw that into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said, that he should be examined under scorching so they so that he might know why they shouted so against him and as they bound him with thumb Paul said to the centurion who stood by is it lawful for you to scorch a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned when the Zenon heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take away what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, With a large sum, I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. So just imagine. If Paul did not know his right, he did not know his the privileges accorded him as a Roman citizen, they were going to beat him until he died. As soon as they started beating him, Paul said, Can you beat a Roman citizen who has not been tried and who has not been condemned? You see, we all know in the Bible. That Paul was born a Jew. His father had the Roman citizenship. It, it, it was very interesting. We don't know how his father managed to obtain the Roman citizenship. But you also know that as soon as the father obtained the Roman citizenship, the father also gave birth to him. So the father had the dual citizenship. He was a Jewish and at the same time a Roman citizen. So as soon as Paul was given birth, as soon as Paul was born, automatically Paul held dual citizenship as a Roman citizen and also a Jew. <music>
They brought him to the king, the, the commander. And now the commander started beating him. Paul said, you cannot do that. I know my right. I know my If we know our right in this kingdom, if we know the keys to this kingdom, nobody will walk over it. No powers of darkness can intimidate us. He said, I know my right as a Roman citizen. He went to school. Knowledge is very powerful. The same thing also happened in Acts chapter 16, verse 35 to 40. You have to understand this key that you are a citizen from heaven and nobody can just do anything to you anytime. He said, the commander answered, with the large sums of money, I obtained this citizenship. With the large sums of money, I obtained this citizenship. But Paul said, me, I was born a citizen. But born a citizen. You belong to this kingdom. Don't allow anything to disturb you. Don't allow anything to frustrate you. Just know your right. Just know it. Just study it. Just know it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God so much that today, God, I believe that this message has been a blessing to your life and to my life and to everyone's life. I pray that Almighty God will help you to understand the keys to this kingdom. Know your right. I call it know your right. And once you know your right in this kingdom, you become somebody special. May God bless you so much. Maybe you are listening to me and you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. I want to recommend my Jesus unto you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He loves you so much that if you can just give your life to him, he will accept you and he will rouse you into this kingdom. I want you to say this after me. The Lord Jesus Christ, today I confess all my sin and I give my life unto you. I surrender my life unto you. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood and accept me as your son. I thank God that Jesus has forgiven you all your sins. And you become born again, and you are now a member, a resident of this kingdom. May God bless you so much. May the hand of God rest upon you, and may God keep you, and may the face of God shine upon you, and may God bless you for listening to me. I strongly believe that this message has been a blessing into your life. I will see you another time. My name is Dr. Edward Fauci, the senior pastor of Faith Place and Faith Church. God bless you. God bless you. I will see you another time.